What kind of floss should you use? What do I use? Do we even need to floss? Let's dive in. So do we need to floss? This is gonna be a controversial opinion, but no, I don't think you do need to floss as long as you are eating a great diet. Now, most people don't know what a great diet is, and most people do not eat a great diet. So in that case, yes, most people should be flossing. So let's assume most people should be flossing, and let's go there. What kind of floss should you use? And I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. You should probably use a PFA-free floss. Okay, let's dive in, unpack what are these PFAS's and why we should avoid them in our dental floss as well as in other parts of our lives. So PFAS's, these are per and poly fluoral alkyl substances and there are like 5,000 of them and we really only know very much about like a handful of them. For example, PFOA, PFOS, and we know enough about those to know that they're dangerous. And in the United States, there's been a decades long removal of these compounds, but they've been replaced by other PFASs. And a lot of these we just don't know very much about. So why do we use these? Well, we started uh, using these, manufacturing them, putting them in various products in the 1940s because they have some unique compounds. There is excuse me, a carbon bonded to a fluorine and it creates a very strong bond which creates basically heat resistant, water repellent, basically these indestructible forever chemicals that are used in, you'll be surprised, we'll talk about some of the things that they're used in, uh, but they're all around us. And in a study, in numerous studies actually, in uh, people like Americans in the United States, 99.9% .9 of us, we have these PFASs in our blood. Uh, so they are pervasive in our world and they are pervasive in our bodies. Uh, and I generally don't like to major in the minors. And I would normally say floss that has a little bit of PFAS on it is a minor and you know, let's focus on eating right. However, these PFASs are so pervasive that I do think it's important that we do all that we can to limit our exposure where we can. So that's what this video is about, is how can we limit our exposure, um, both in our dental floss, but as well as other places. Because they are linked with hormonal issues, cancers, autoimmunity, neurotoxicity, damaging of various uh, uh, organs, as well as weight gain. There's a study done in 2018, I believe it was, where the people who had the most PFASs in their blood had slower metabolism metabolisms and increased uh, likelihood of weight gain and obesity. And I have a theory of why this is, and that's because these PFASs activate a certain receptor in the liver, which then turns on transcription factors like, PP, like PPAR uh, gamma, which turns on lipogenic genes. All this to basically say is these are turning on genes that make us store fat and decrease our metabolic rate. So where are we getting exposed to these uh, be, besides floss? We'll come back to floss. Two major places are our water and our food. So let's start with water. It is found in the water, so I highly recommend people filter their water. Two best ways to filter is either, either reverse osmosis, which is kind of a complex setup. So what I personally do is I just use a Berkey filter and it fil filters out the PFASs as well as fluoride, which I want to uh, filter out of my water. That's a video, that's another video. We'll save the, the why I want, like to filter out fluoride uh, for another time because I want to focus on PFASs here. But filtering your water, that's a great step number one. Number two is our food. And commonly in packages and wrappers is where a lot of these are found. And there was a study that, that looked into these packages and wrappers. And the conclusion of the study was basically there's a lot of PFASs in these pa uh, packaging and wrappers. And, I found it super interesting. This is especially important for children because in the study, they found one in three children in the United States eat fast food on a daily basis. And the exposure to these PFASs in the fast food wrappers and food uh, could potentially have more adverse effects on people during children while during development, so to avoid it. Now, this is one of those situations where I say, I like to major in the majors, meaning they should not be eating fast food every single day. That is crazy, uh, but as, as well as it's important, I think, to limit PFAS exposure. Uh, where else are we getting these nonstick uh, pans, the Teflon pans? Uh, we get it, like I said, it's in the water, so it goes into plants, it goes into animals, we eat the plants and animals, we get it into our bodies. 
the California Department of Toxic Substance Control, they identified carpets and rugs as the largest source of significant widespread PFAS exposure, especially for children. So the coating of furniture and clothing, things that make them stain resistant and water repellent, those tend to be high in PFASs. Uh, they're also in electronics uh, and used in the manufacturing of electronics and wires and cables, production of computer chips. These things are everywhere. Okay, so what can we do about this? Well, filter our water and limit our exposure to these other um, components that are high in PFASs. But we can also choose the right kind of floss that's PFA-free floss. And the, the flosses that have the PFA, you need to look in the ingredients they'll have like fluoro or perfluoro but they're the the kind that typically glide and that's why people like them because they have our teeth are stuck together we need to glide that floss in between the contacts and without glide it can be tough uh, but there's other options such as various kinds of waxes we have beeswax there's plant waxes there's even coconut oil so our flosses can be waxed with something else that's going to aid in the sliding of the floss through the contacts so i've tested a whole bunch of different kinds of floss and different kinds. So flosses, most are nylon, but there's also polyester. There's silk, which is the one I recommend for a lot of people if they can use silk. Silk just shreds with my teeth. So there's other things like bamboo, uh, corn fiber. I personally think nylon is fine. There's environmental concerns with nylon and polyester because they're made of petroleum. But as far as like kind of flosses actually work for my teeth, I go with nylon and just make sure that it is waxed with something other than PFA. But beyond floss, we want to look out for packages, wrappers. We want to filter our water. We want to avoid the stain resistant clothing and furniture and carpets. Uh, you even want to look at like a lot of your personal care items. If you're using nail polish or facial facial uh, moisturizers, makeup, sunscreen, you got to look on the ingredients for these fluoro compounds or perfluoral compounds. And I would recommend avoiding those. And so that's kind of the conclusion. I'll have some links below to, you know, different kinds of flosses you can check out as well as water filtering. And those are two simple things we can do to limit our PFA exposure. And if you're interested in the fluoride video and why I filter that out of the water as well, let me know in the comments and I will shoot that video if there's interest. All right, thanks so much. See you in the next one.